Welcome to this week's Behind the Wheel Show, featuring Gene Capo of Victory Honda of Sandusky. And now, here's Gino. Hi, folks. Gene Capo here, Behind the Wheel Radio.com. We're back again this week, hanging out with Troy at Mix 1027. 1450 AM WLEC, Eagle 99.1, just to name a few. Maybe more down the road. You just never know. Um, I'm Gene Capo. I operate Victory Honda of Sandusky, Ohio, right at the corners of Hayes and Perkins Avenue, and Victory Pre Owned Cars, 4104 Milan Road, between Pizza Hut and Red Lobster, rocking out the deals there, too. And of course, our dandy website, VictorySandusky.com. Check us out online, you guys. All the great pictures of all the cars. New ones, used ones, actual photos, so you can see the colors, see the flavors, see the inside, outside, do everything you want to do right from the comfort of your own home. Then, and only then, when you pick the one that you love, you can email us, you can text us, you can stop by the dealership, you can give us a call. Whatever you like, come by and we'll give you all the information you need on that particular car. You can take a nice test drive, take it overnight, whatever works for you. We will always work with you, and when the time comes where we find the one that you love, we, of course, will give you the best deal possible, always the only Victory Honda. Um, Troy, what's happening? Um, well, it's uh, it's an exciting time. Go Tribe. Go Tribe, that's right. The Tribe is uh, looking good. A few new names, a few injuries, I guess. Yeah. Who's injured? Mike Clevenger. Mike the, Clevenger. The starting pitcher. Ah. The guy with the long hair. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. yeah, he uh, hurt his back, and he's going to be out for... Six to eight weeks, and by out, I mean he's not even going to throw a ball for six to eight. Oh, weeks. that can't be good. Yeah. All right. So, well. but we are uh, we're doing what we need to. We're treading water until all the others other guys get back. Like and the good Frankie. news is there's 182 games. The season is 62. What? 162. 162. Yeah. The season's like two years long. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure he'll be back before the season's out. That's right. I swear. 419-975-9205 with your questions, you guys. Calling in. We triple dog dairy because if you do, of course, we're going to research it. We're going to read it on the air. We're going to answer it for you as best we can. And we've got some doozies for today. Leo from Oregon checks in. Ooh, uh, Kelly from Sandusky. Cindy from Mansfield. Chelsea from Huron checked in, Troy. And, right. ooh, I got to talk about this first. Cool article I found about the Honda Accord. And it, according to Car and Driver, is the number one car with millennials. How cool. Uh, number one car was the Accord, followed by the Civic. Very cool. Number one and two. Uh, then the Altima, the Sonata, Impala, F-150, Corolla, Focus, and Cherokee. Funny, two of those on those li- on the list are not going to be made anymore, yeah. interestingly enough. But turns out it said in the article that millennials, and I hate to use group names like that, but I think it's people uh, that they surveyed between 24 and 37, if memory serves. Yeah, I don't know what the... That's pretty close, I think, to the years that fall into the millennial category. And um, they like cars, they said, that are inexpensive or relatively inexpensive and good value. So that appears to be no different than anybody else from what I've met. Everybody likes those two things, but those seem to be the cars that they like the most. And the Honda Accord and Honda Civic, of course, are number one and two, just as you might suspect. So we'll toot some Honda horn there to start the show. And, you know, let me just, you know, on that, I mean, are are you seeing that at at the dealership itself? Are you seeing kind of that younger demographic, uh, whether it's new or used, just going kind of after the, the Accords and the Civics? Yeah, you do. And I think um, it's always kind of been that way. And especially, I think a, a little bit of it, was, I don't think is, you know, the fault of how old someone is or when they were born or any of the other jazz that the article might indicate. I think it's more to the effect that, you know, SUVs have really taken off in popularity and availability. Because 25 years ago when I was a kid, you know, it didn't, they weren't available like they are now. Um, SUV wasn't even really a thing yet. Uh, we were still working on minivans and making those cool, right? So it just depends on how you really look at it. When you look at the availability of SUV now and how many different models there are, it has a tendency to dwarf the car segment anymore with more models and more popularity. But that said, um, it's really brought Civic and Accord to a point where um, they can offer, in many cases, better value for your dollar. And otherwise, your dollars will go further in the way of incentives, in the way of better leasing, in the way of uh, better pricing. 
and better mileage, even though gas is still relatively cheap. Although I noticed this morning it's not very cheap. Good right. Lord, I paid, it's almost $3 again. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> Where's the girl that fixes the prices on the That's side? Because right. we That's need right. to speak with her pronto. Get her on the phone. That's what we need to do. But aside from talking to her about it, I'm getting an extremely fuel-efficient car, and the Accords and Civics are far beyond, in the mileage category, anything that we ever had 10 or 15 years ago. I mean, if you got... When I was a kid, if you got 30 miles to the gallon, that was great and totally unnecessary because the gas was $1.25. <laughs> so what you really were was just, you know, someone who was you, but trying to be efficient. You know, you loved the car. You bought the Honda not because it was this, that, or the other. It was because you liked it and what it was, how it was built, the quality of it, the way it, uh, the way it ran and the, how long it lasted. And that's really stayed with the Hondas, and they've continued to improve in safety, mileage, all the rest of it. Um, but, you know, proof that the Accord is, is getting better and better and better when you see, you know, surveys like this where the Accord and Civic are number one and number two, and then you go see the car, you understand why. Because the, the content of um, quality, sophistication, um, safety type uh, standards that are used now compared to what it was years and years ago, uh, it's so much different. The cars are so much nicer. You know. I mean, and, and those are even family cars. I mean, I have the Civic for myself. It's good for the family. I know the Accord's a little bit bigger. I mean, that's the other part of it, too, is you're getting these millennial families who are or people who are starting families, and those are still good cars that you could use for a family. Oh, without a doubt. And because of the popularity of SUVs, oftentimes less expensive, too. Um, you don't find as many incentives on the SUVs that sell like crazy because everybody wants those now. So it's kind of left... Uh, the car segment with some pretty good value advantages in many cases. So it doesn't surprise me that the Accord and Civic are, are tops in the value category when, in, when in fact, the, the folks in this survey are really looking for the best value because it's pretty hard to argue Accord and Civic when you compare it to even some of the other Hondas and the SUVs that they sell. So uh, good stuff, though. Um, ooh, do we have time for a question? No. We do not. We're going to commercial. But when we get back, guys, 419-975-9205. Call in a question. I got a bunch. Keep driving. Gas is still under $3 somehow. We're talking to that person later, though. You can rest on that. So don't go away. Don't just dream it. Drive it during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event. Going on now at Victory Honda of Sandusky. Hi, I'm Gene Capo. And right now, our deals are so good, you might think you're dreaming. Like a brand new 2019 Honda Accord LX. Lease for only $179 a month. Or a brand new 2019 Honda Civic LX for just $125 a month. And when you upgrade your vehicle at Victory Honda, we'll give you 125% of the book value for your trade. For complete details, visit VictorySandusky.com. Then come into Victory Honda on the corner of Hayes and Perkins and say big this spring. But you better hurry because those deals won't last. So don't miss the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event now at Victory Honda. With approved credit through HFS, not all buyers or vehicles will qualify. All leases for 36 months with $29.99 down plus tax title license, $4.99 dock and $9.95 destination fee. 125% of black book wholesale value minus restocking and reconditioning and mileage fees. Subject to clean Carfax report. See dealer for complete details. Offers don't combine. Offer expires 4 30 19 Hi, folks. Gene Capo here behind the wheel radio.com. We're back from commercial. Living large and loving life here at 1027, 1450 AM WLEC and Eagle 99.1. Just to name a few, we're online all the time crazy with Troy hanging out. Troy is uh, our resident Indians expert. He gave us an update earlier, and they're doing well amid a few injuries. One of my favorite pitchers is injured. What is his name? Mike Clevenger. Mr. Clevenger. Yeah, I like him. I can't remember his name, but I like him quite well. Questions, you guys, 419-975-9205. I'm Gene Capo. I operate Victory Honda of Sandusky, Ohio, at the corner of Hayes and Perkins Avenue and 4104 Milan Road between Pizza Hut and Red Lobster. Victory pre-owned cars and victorysandusky.com, our wonderful website. Check it out. Ooh, the questions, Troy. Let's get to them. Leo from Oregon writes, hi, Gene. I've heard you talk a lot about employees at the dealership being very nice. Do you, do you ever have the occasion to discipline any employees? And if so, how would you do it? Leo from Oregon. That's a trick question. That is, that's an interesting one. Who's screening these? We're crying out loud. I'm sorry. Um, I let that one slip through. Holy moly. That's a tough one because discipline 
anybody knows with your kids or people or anybody else is not anybody's favorite topic. That's for sure. But I can tell you this, you know, when I have to talk to an employee and it does happen where, you know, your discussions aren't always positive when it comes to performance. But normally what I try and do is because I've selected employees that do such a nice job as a rule, number one, I don't have to do it very often. Number two, I think the rule is Leo. Um, and you know, this goes for pretty much anybody in a supervisory role. Um, don't let stuff fester. So for instance, if you have an issue with someone, it might be something small. So you think, eh, it's no big deal. I just won't say anything. And then the next thing happens. And then the next thing happens. And then the next thing happens. And pretty soon you got a whole bunch of stuff you didn't say anything about. And then you finally decide, ah, I got to talk to this person, right? I got all this stuff. And by the time you do it, you're angry, upset, frustrated, and through with this situation. And you let them know in, so, know, know in certain terms that it all has to change today. So instead of throwing that in the lap of, of a would-be employee and ignoring some really small, very insignificant, very easily correctable items and making it into a big snowball, that's where, you know, some daily conversation is really good. And when you have something that you bring up uh, that you think is a, a trainable situation, in other words, you know, provided that whatever you're disciplining the employee is, it's not something they did maliciously. They might just be making a mistake at work. They might uh, not understand a certain system. Those are the easy ones. Um, if you've got an employee that's acting up, that is doing something that's personality laden, that's ruining your team's um, uh, unity and your organization and your, it's affecting morale, um, that can be really, really, really bad for the organization. So that's one that you can't ignore for one second. And that's one where oftentimes discipline isn't always the answer, I'll warn. Because usually if somebody's upset, there's a reason. And if there's a reason, oftentimes there's a solution. So a lot of times I think the biggest mistake people make, Leo, is they ignore those situations. And they let them build. And then more of them come. Because you got to remember, Leo, when you ignore that situation and the, and the uh, employee knows that they did something wrong or they didn't perform up to standard or something that's making them unhappy is going on. When you don't talk to them, they think you don't care because they haven't heard from you. So the number one thing you can do is tell an employee, look, I am behind you 100%. I'm going to train you to the best of my ability so you don't have to be upset so that you know your job top to bottom and you can perform it, you know, ideally without thinking about it. Right. So if that's not the case and you're unhappy, usually there's a pretty hard and fast reason. One that you shouldn't ignore that you should address. And 99 times out of 100, not always, but most times, uh, it's a situation that with a little bit of communication on the team can be overcome pretty quickly. Um, yet again, Leo left to fester and ignored over time can culminate with a bunch of other stuff that happens. And pretty soon you can get to the point where it's irreparable. And the person is so unhappy that they just can't stay anymore. And that happens all over the place all the time. And it does because, generally speaking, um, people in positions of supervisory roles can oftentimes ignore things long enough where it becomes impossible for them to handle or the employee. Can you imagine that, Troy, where you just get so upset and the supervisor so upset that pretty because they never talk to one another that pretty soon it's a shouting match. And, you know, how that always ends. I mean, it's, it's just like anything else. It's communication. Big time and do it often. And the other thing, Leo, I would say is to, if you have a lot of negative stuff, you always have to talk about, you're not talking enough. That's all I can tell you. Because if any person anywhere, and this works with dogs and cats too, I own them. If all they get is negative feedback from you and that's it, um, that's all they're going to ever expect from you. And they think there's no pleasing you. Right? So if, you make sure, Leo, that there's two or three times the number of positives going out than there are negatives. Um, all of a sudden, you're going to find out that your negatives almost go away completely and that you create a culture within your company that will make people just make their own rules. 
I heard a good quote once, Troy, that kind of stuck with me. And it was through a, a sports writer friend of mine um, that got to walk across to Yankee Stadium with Yogi Berra when he was coaching. And he was at spring training and he said he was so amazed because all the guys had caps on and they were all dressed the same, identical. You couldn't, their shirts, their shorts, their or, uh, their pants, everything to a T. This is spring training. It's not like they had a game that day, right? Um, and he asked Yogi Berra, he said, what would you do if you came across one of your players and he had his, his uniform all messed up? You know, a clear violation of stuff that they hold dear. And he looked at the, the reporter and kind of smiled. He said, you know, it would never get to me. And he said, what do you mean by that? He says, because our culture is our culture. Everybody's involved. So that person, the first person that saw that person with their uniform messed up would have made him fix it. It would have never gotten all the way to me. Somebody before me that saw him would have went, hey, wait a minute. You don't want to walk in there that way. Let me help you fix your uniform. Right? Because it's a culture of that way. And to me, Leo, if you can make that go on in your business, It'll just keep growing and growing and growing, and pretty soon you'll have a terrific place to work, just like we do. So great question, Leo. We're going to commercial. When we come back, more great stuff. Don't go away. Don't just dream it, drive it during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event going on now at Victory Honda of Sandusky. Hi, I'm Gene Capo, and right now our deals are so good, you might think you're dreaming. Like a brand new 2019 CRV LX front wheel drive lease for only $179 a month, or a brand new 2019 Honda HRV LX front wheel drive for just $125 a month. And when you upgrade your vehicle at Victory Honda, we'll give you 125% of the book value for your trade. For complete details, visit Victory sandusky.com then come into victory honda on the corner of hayes and perkins and say big this spring but you better hurry because those deals won't last so don't miss the honda dream garage spring event now at victory honda with approved credit through hfs not all buyers or vehicles will qualify all leases for 36 months with 29.99 down plus tax title license 499 dock and 995 destination fee 125 percent of black book wholesale value minus restocking reconditioning and mileage fees subject to clean carfax report see dealer for complete details offers don't combine offer expires 4 30 19 Hi, folks. Gene Capo here behind the wheel radio.com. We're back from commercial. Living large and loving life here with Troy at Mix 1027, 1450 AM WLEC and Eagle 99.1, just to name a few. And great questions this week, 419-975-9205. With your questions, you guys, I'm Gene Capo. Operate Victory Honda of Sandusky, Ohio, 2301 Hayes Ave. Corner Hayes and Perkins, and we're rocking out the new cars, the, the pre-owned cars, the certified cars, the full cleanups, you guys. Come to Victory Honda, corner of Hayes and Perkins, and get your car detailed. It's spring. It's time. Warm weather's coming. The beach is coming. Ugh, the car, I know. My car's the same way. There's salt. There's this. There's that. There's the other thing. There's, oh, there's that other thing. We can help you with all the things. Just bring it over. We can shampoo. We can clean the the glass inside and out. We can polish the paint, put a wax job on it for summer, make you cool as a cucumber with a brain. Beautiful, clean, new car inside and out. Uh, we'll get the console under the seats, Troy. That's Shampoo important. the carpet. Yeah. You know that stain in the back? Yeah, I don't know what it was either. Yeah. But it's coming out. That thing, yeah. I don't know what that we is. We don't even <laughs> remember where that came from. But it's coming out because we've got the tools to help you guys. So come on over to Victory on and get your car cleaned up for spring. The detail shop is amazing. The questions are even more so, you guys. Cindy from Mansfield writes, Hi, Gene. I keep getting notices about my warranty expiring. It looks very official. And my car's only two years old. My warranty's still on. What gives Cindy from Mansfield? You know, I, I think we've had this question before, Troy, because I see this at work quite often. And what happens is, you guys, and Cindy, this is, might be the case with you as well. But feel free to contact me at the dealership, 419-626-1061, and we can make certain. But for a lot of my customers, they start receiving notices after about two years because their three-year, 36,000-mile warranty on their Honda is uh, going to run out in three years, not two years. So what these companies do is they send you an official-looking notice warning you that your warranty is going to expire. Call us immediately. And what they want to do is sell you an extended service contract or a maintenance agreement, or an extended warranty, whichever you'd prefer. Um, so be forewarned. When you call the number, 
it's they're not trying to send you some official thing from the manufacturer 99 times out of 100 it won't be from victory honda of sandusky because we don't send out correspondence like that um and if you get one and you got a question feel free to contact me stop by the dealership i have customers do it all the time better safe than sorry right but don't be surprised if you get some correspondence in the mail talking about your warranty and generally speaking more times than not it's an outside company from who knows where that sent it out in an effort to sell you something, uh, not just to tell you your warranty's running out. So they're offering you replacement as well, Cindy. So again, if you have questions or you want to show it to me, fax it to me, explain me to me what it looks like, that sort of thing, I'll know generally what it means. And, you know, through Honda, there's a lot of extended service contracts that you guys can get uh, if you decide to keep your Honda longer than the factory warranty. So great question, Cindy, because this happens to a lot of people. And um, it's easily to get uh, to get in confused because it really looks official. Some of these advertisements they send and it looks like something from the state, even though it's not most of the time. So um, let us check it out, Cindy. We'd love to help you. Um, ooh, here's a good one, Troy. We got to do this one. Chelsea from here on writes, hi, Gene. Let's see. Do you think it's better to buy a brand new car or a used car a couple years old. My husband says used only. I say the new would be great. We get a car about every three or four years, and I can't convince him. <laughs> LOL. Chelsea from Huron. Um, well, that's a battle, Chelsea, and, and one that I deal with every day as far as which do I get. Do I get a car that's a couple years old? Do I get a brand new one? Um, and I think there's an easy answer to the question in most cases. And I'll warn you, Chelsea, that your husband is not always incorrect because a lot of times he's right. A year, a car, a couple years old with decent miles, you can save a lot of money, um, especially if uh, there's a lot of those cars around. In other words, like some cars, there's way more available for sale than others. So when you look at a car and you can pick a car and maybe an SUV or like the Honda Pilot, there's not very many of those available used. Where maybe uh, the Honda Civic or Accord or Chevy Malibu, there might be quite a few in the market. So when you look at those cars and you say, okay, well, what do they cost new? What are the incentives on the new ones? Because that's to be considered as well. If you go in blind and you just say, I'm going to buy a car a year or two old and that's it. And you don't compare it to the new car, you might be overlooking some interesting factors. Because oftentimes... Depending on the car, Chelsea, doesn't work with every car, but some cars, other cars can be different. But some cars, if you look at something a year or two old, it hasn't depreciated enough um, to really make a huge difference in the price, number one. If that's the case, then there's big incentives on the new car. You want to know that before you buy the used one. Secondly, oftentimes, if you're financing your vehicles, which many of us are, uh, oftentimes the interest rate is far better than that of what you'll get on the used car. So sometimes that can help save you so much interest that it can help close the gap in the cost between the new car and the used car. So when you say which is better, um, it just depends on the situation. And here's the third factor. When you trade a used car in on a new car, you get sales tax on the difference. So depending on the car that you're buying, Chelsea, um, if you buy a two-year-old car, you won't get tax on the difference. You'll pay the full sales tax on the full purchase price of the car. If you get a new car, of course, whatever your trade-in is worth goes against the purchase price. You're going to get taxed on the difference. So again, depending on how much your trade-in is worth. So if your trade-in is worth 2000 not a big deal because you don't save that much money by trading. If your vehicle is worth 20000 now, all of a sudden, you're saving $1,500 in sales tax if you go with a new vehicle right off the top. So if you take the sales tax savings, the interest rate savings, you could potentially be just as affordable on a new car than you can be on a pre-owned. But those factors have to be measured. That's the best way to go. So pick out the one you like. Check out the new one. What's it going to cost? What's the interest rate? How much is it over time? Check out the used ones. See if there's one you like and how much it is and do the math. And oftentimes, Chelsea, that will give you the right answer every time because I think you both can be right depending on the vehicle. Uh, there's new cars out there, Chelsea, 
that we could probably talk him into just between you and I. Don't tell your husband I said that. So call me at the office, 419-626-1061. Would love to talk to you. How are we doing on time, Troy? Do we have time for one more? Do we have one more? Ah, we do. Yeah, quick. Hi, Gene. I have an engine light that keeps coming on intermittently. My car has 126,000 on it, but I still love it. I can't afford to keep throwing money on it, though. Any thoughts, Kelly from Sandusky? Well, Kelly, a lot of times if it's an intermittent light, it's probably a sensor of some variety. A lot of times there's an oxygen sensor that can be pretty pesky on some of the older cars. Um, easily diagnosed, however, and if you want to bring it over to the dealership, we'll be glad they do it for you, for no charge, because you called into the show. And then if you want to replace it, you can. Oftentimes, it doesn't really hurt anything in that the car will still run. But if it is the wrong type of sensor, oftentimes... Um, it can affect your fuel economy in kind of a negative way, too. So if you lose 10 miles per gallon, that can sometimes be more expensive than buying a couple hundred dollar sensor over time. So bring it by. Call us at the dealership, 419-626-1061. Be more than happy to diagnose that one from you because it could be something real simple. If it's intermittent, it might not be anything at all. But we're going to commercial, you guys. When we come back, more great stuff. Do not go away. We'll be right back. Don't just dream it, drive it during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event going on now at Victory Honda of Sandusky. Hi, I'm Gene Capo, and right now our deals are so good, you might think you're dreaming. Like a brand new 2019 Honda Accord LX, leased for only $179 a month. Or a brand new 2019 Honda Civic LX for just $125 a month. And when you upgrade your vehicle at Victory Honda, we'll give you 125% of the book value for your trade. For complete details, visit VictorySandusky.com. Then come into Victory Honda on the corner of Hayes and Perkins and say big this spring. But you better hurry because those deals won't last. So don't miss the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event now at Victory Honda. With approved credit through HFS, not all buyers or vehicles will qualify. All leases for 36 months with $29.99 down plus tax title license, $4.99 and $9.95 destination fee. 125% of black book wholesale value minus restocking and reconditioning and mileage fees. Subject to clean car facts report. See dealer for complete details. Offers don't combine. Offer expires 4 30 19 Hi, folks. Gene Capo here behind the wheel radio.com. We're back from commercial living large and loving life here. Hanging out with Troy at Mix 102.7, 1450 AM WLEC and Eagle 99.1, just to name a few. I'm Gene Capo. I operate Victory Honda of Sandusky, Ohio, and Victory Pre-Owned Cars, 4104 Milan Road and 2301 Hayes Avenue. Corner of Hayes and Perkins. We're rocking them out in Victory Sandusky. Com. Check out our website, you guys. Tons of great stuff. Tons of great questions this week, you guys. Troy, the questions have been madness. Cindy from Mansfield, um, I know you keep getting notices about your warranty. Call me if you have questions, but oftentimes it's just somebody trying to sell you something. I know you've never heard that one before, but that is probably the dealio. Chelsea from here on, good used car, nothing wrong with that. Tell your husband I'm on his team. However, you got to check out the incentives on the new cars. Because sometimes, not every time, but sometimes they can make the new car just as affordable as the used. But you got to do the math, got to do the research, be more than happy to help you do that. Chelsea, call me at the office, 419-626-1061. Leo from Oregon, uh, if you got to discipline an employee, make sure that it's a mixture. Make sure there's positive. Um, if you got to talk about negative stuff, make sure you do it in a way that's respectful so that the folks don't feel like you're beating up on them. And make sure that deep down you're on their team and you want them to succeed. Because if they know that, uh, you're going to have very, very few times where you have to do that sort of work. And when you do, uh, it's going to be pretty simple. Um, Kelly from Sandusky Engine Lights. They come on. They go off. It's almost magical. What do we do? Well, your car's got 126,000, so it may or may not be affecting the car, but easily we can check that out. An intermittent light is something we hear about all the time, um, but we can easily diagnose it for you and see if it's worth fixing, and if so, help you get a good deal on fixing that one. Great show, you guys. Um, We got so many good questions for next week. 419-975-9205 if you want to add to the list because... It's going to be a great show. So, guys, we love you. Happy motoring, and we'll see you next week. Need expert automotive advice? Email your car question to gene at behindthewheelradio.com. 
Tune in next Saturday for Behind the Wheel Radio, featuring Gene Capo of Victory Honda of Sandusky.